Justice Through Music was at a Freedom in Iran rally on June 12, 2010, one year since the fraudulent 2009 elections in Iran. An activist gathered at the Iranian Interests section and then marched to Freedom Plaza for speeches. Two organizations, the Iranian American Youth and the Solidarity Committee to Protect the Iranian People's Will, sponsored the event. The speakers included Joe Stork from Human Rights Watch, Rudy Bakhtiar, and Roxana Sabiri, among others. So the Solidarity Committee to Protect the Iranian People's Will and the Iranian American Youth I'd like to thank you for gathering here today and joining the worldwide call to action to stand in solidarity with the Iranian people and honoring the thousands upon thousands that have sacrificed in this past for a better tomorrow in Iran. Emruz, that was the home of June 2010, به نمایندگی از طرف کمیته همبستگی و خواسته های دموکراتیک مردم ایران و جوانان ایرانی آمریکایی به شما سپاس میگویم که امروز در اینجا حاضر شده و به فریاد جهانی برای همصدایی با مردم داغ دیده و هزاران ایرانی بیگناهی که جان خود را برای فردای ایرانی بهتر از دست داده اند پاسخ داده اید today, we have three essential goals. First, we hope to draw attention to the struggle for human rights, democracy, and freedom in Iran. Yay! Second, we wish to demonstrate solidarity with the Iranian people. And third, we want to commemorate the many lives that have been lost or interrupted in pursuit of a free Iran. Yay! In the months that followed last year's disputed Iranian presidential election, the people of Iran went to great lengths to show their government and the world that they have an identity and a voice that cannot be suppressed. Their efforts led to an achievement of something unprecedented in the history of the Islamic Republic. For the first time in 30 years, the people of Iran succeeded in coordinating and demonstrating on a massive scale their strong opposition to the theocratic dictatorship that rules their country. Because of their courage and determination in the face of tyranny, injustice, and brutality, they became an object of admiration and a source of inspiration for many people around the world. Of course, last year's presidential election, its controversial result, and its tragic aftermath are all behind us. But something from last year lives on. It lives on because it actually dates back to before last summer's events. It lives on because it's not just about one election or another. It lives on, in other words, because it's a broader and older than everything that happened in Iran in 2009. It's the movement for human rights, democracy, and freedom in Iran, which has very deep roots and remarkably devoted adherents. The enduring ideals of this movement are pluralism, equality, and self-determination. They defined last summer's events just as they inspired previous generations of Iranian political activists, such as the university students of the 18th of Tir in 1999. Importantly, while this movement may see its ups and downs, it never dies, and last summer's events are proof of its lasting resolve and impact. We are here today to recognize this movement, to draw attention to it, to lend support to it, and to commemorate, commemorate the many lives that have been devoted to it. Please support this movement in Iran. Just because we're not there, we can all still do a lot of things here. Each one of us is an ambassador for Iran, for the Iranian people. Everywhere you go, anywhere you go, you should promote awareness of the Iranian people's struggle. Yes. You can write to your congressmen and statesmen and demand that they support the human rights movement inside of Iran. Right here, anyone who's wearing an Iranian American youth sticker has postcards that you can actually take, go online and mail to various addresses and we can tell you more about that later. But we have to help the Iranian people achieve their goals. In closing, I'd like to leave you with a poem from the famous Iranian poet, Sadi. 
بنی آدم اعضای یک دیگرند که در آفرینش ز یک گوهرند چه عضوی به درد آورد روزگار دگر عضوها را نماند قرار تو که از مهنت دیگران بیغمی نشاید که نامت نهند آدمی Human beings are members of a whole in creation of one essence and soul If one member is afflicted with pain other members uneasy will remain If you have no sympathy for human pain the name of a human you cannot retain Thank you I'd like to pass on the mic to Joe Stork Mr. Stork Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming out today. Today, June 12th, is a day for history, for the books. Today we're here to remember what happened last June 12th. And today we're here to also do what we can to support those people in Iran, the many millions in Iran, who are going to make sure that it doesn't happen again. I think the reason we're here was summed up very well by Maziar Bahari, the reporter who was in jail for many, many months. And he said, the prisoner's worst nightmare is the thought of being forgotten. And your presence here today is one of those elements from around the world today, I think, and in Iran itself, to assure the prisoners in Iran, the thousands of prisoners in Iran, that they are not forgotten. A few days ago, Amnesty International published a very large report looking at the repression, the arrests, the detentions, the state of the prisons and so forth in Iran over the past year. And in their table of contents, they have a list of the categories of people who have been uh, arbitrarily detained, arrested, jailed, and in some cases, executed. The list is this, political activists, students, graduates, journalists, filmmakers, artists, rights defenders, lawyers, clerics, people linked to members of band groups, members of ethnic minorities, religious minorities, workers, professional associations, family members of prominent activists. You know, a shorter list would have been the people who aren't being targeted. Nearly everyone in Iran is being targeted because this is a people's movement. There was a, a, a quite a nice story in today's New York Times, and I just want to read you the quotation from one young man, a 30-year-old teacher, who of course felt he had to remain anonymous. And after you hear what he said, you'll understand why he felt that way. He said, maybe on the surface, it seems like everything is over. By, every, by, every, by, everyone, by everyone keeping the fire under the ashes alive, when they could get the chance, they'll bring it out in the open again. Eventually, in Iran, there will be statues of Neda Aga Sultan. I don't mean not. I don't mean just the figurines that the factory outside of Tehran is producing. The factory that got shut down this week or last week. We're talking about a true monument to Neda and to all the other heroic sacrificers for the struggle. Thank you.